Hello everyone, my name is Yuki. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Anthropology, and today I'm going to talk to you about the block anatomy. Here's a brief list of what we'll be covering today. I'm going to talk about the output types, the overloads, the information, properties, display, comments, and the different block types we use at Anthropology. Blocks are the core UI element of Anthropology, from importing CAD to changing them into implicit bodies, creating lattices, and creating your reusable workflow. Anything you do in Anthropology, you will always use a block. So let's start dissecting the block. Let's start with the block output. The output type is indicated with an icon to the left of the name. And by hovering over the icon, in this case, our implicit lattice block, it is telling me that this output type is an implicit body. Now, where another block requires an implicit body, I can use that block as my input. I like to tell people that Anthropology is a visual programming software. And you'll understand a little of what I mean with this short example. So I want to mesh this body. And by looking at the icon on the mesh block, it is asking for an implicit body. And since my other block is an implicit body, and since these two icons match, I can use this block as my input. So by simply nesting those together, I now have created a mesh for my implicit body. Uh, maybe I need, I want to clean my mesh up a bit. So I brought in this remesh surface block, and one of the input is asking for a mesh block. And since these two icons match, I can nest these blocks together, and I have now created quads on my part on the surface. So maybe I want to run a simulation, uh, a static, static analysis specifically, and I need some volume meshes for my part. So with the volume mesh block, one of the input, again, asking for a mesh block, I can simply take this block, nest these together, since those icons match, I now have created a volume mesh on my part. And lastly, I need to use, I need to bring in an FE volume mesh block to run the simulation. So since these two icons, since this FE volume mesh block is asking for a volume mesh, I can simply take this block, since the icons match, drag that in, nest those blocks together, and now I have a mesh ready to use for simulation. So yeah, you can use and combine many different blocks and create complex and high level workflows just by matching those inputs and outputs. You'll notice the blocks are represented by different colors and different colors represent different data types. If your block is blue, it represents a simulation. Purple represents a lattice. Orange represents a mesh. Yellow represents a CAD. Green represents a field. The dark green represents an implicit body and the gray represents a data. Let's talk about the overload. Certain blocks are capable of an overload, which means they have multiple configurations and may have the option to return different output types. Not every block has that function, but blocks that do have an overload have a dropdown by its name. For example, with the add block, a user can select the following overloads for both inputs operand A and operand B. We also have a neat feature that automatically selects the correct overload of a block based on the type of inputs you provide. So I have three different inputs over here. I have a scalar, integer, and a scalar field block. And so by simply nesting these blocks together, it will update its overload, its output type. So now this is a scalar. I drag in this integer in here, and it changed into an integer. And lastly, if I bring in a scalar field, I'll change as a scalar field. Let's talk about the block status. You'll find the status of the block on the right side over here. We show the status of the block, whether it's unbuilt, giving you a warning, an error, or if it's complete. When the status is blue, it means that the block is incomplete and needs some inputs to run the block. In this case, if I want to run this static analysis, it needs a model and some load cases. And once that has been provided, the block will be marked as built and the status will turn change to gray color. If the status is yellow, it means that the block is giving you a warning and that when working with this block, it may or may not cause issues later on, but you can still use the block in your notebook. And lastly, if your status is red, the block is giving you an error. And by opening up the block details, it will tell you what the issue is. In my case, I forgot to specify units. And by simply adding those units, we'll update its status and run my block. 
there's a little bit more information we can get by viewing the block details, which opens up a panel with four tabs. The first tab tells us as much information about the block. Let's take this topology optimization block, for example. It's gonna break down each input, what data type you need, and the description of each of the inputs. And if you scroll all the way down, you can also find what this block can output to. In this case, it will output to a top opt result, but this block can also be converted to as and be used as a scalar field. So if I take this ramp block, for example, any symbol with the scalar field, this top op can be used as an input. You can also click on the learn more button and open up a separate window to learn more in depth about the block. The second tab is your properties. These are actual properties of the geometry or data behind the block that can be used with other blocks. And we like to call these chips. You can use them to help you create more complex workflows or get specific data out of them. You can reference maximum points, minimum points, fields, centroids, whatever block you might have, there are properties in here. So I ran a static analysis on a cantilever beam and want to know my max, min, and average stress results. So I took out the von Mises results from the static analysis. And by going into the properties tab, I can take the values chip because these values correspond to all the stress value at each node. And by simply dragging these chips into my max, min, and average block, I will get those values. The display, you can change the object's color. This is very useful when you're trying to highlight the differences. So I created a rectangular cell map and I also warped it and I wanna compare it side by side. And by changing the color of each of the objects, I can, it helps me visually see and understand the difference. It's a very useful tool when showing other colleagues the updates you have made and to point out the significant differences. And lastly, the comments. Comments can be added to each block and it serves as useful notes to help navigate your notebook. And you'll notice a couple of blocks have comments at the top of mine. That is because I like to keep my notebook organized and it helps me understand what is what. It could also be used to communicate a workflow to others using your file. I'm gonna use one of these custom blocks in anthropology where it will shell and infill a lattice inside my part. And maybe I don't want my thickness to be less than 0.5 millimeters, my lattice thickness. So I can simply write a comment saying, lattice thickness must be greater than 0.5 millimeters. And maybe I also don't want, maybe I want my shell to be at always at 0.5 millimeters. So I can simply write that comment as a note for myself, but also to whomever I give this file to. And if they were to work on it, they'll see those comments and it will let them know what they can and can't change. I hope you had a good understanding of the block anatomy. We talked about the different block output types, the different block colors, the overloads, the block status, and the block details. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach us out. Thank you. If you're curious about anything at Entopology, set up a few minutes with us and a demo to get your questions answered. Go to entopology.com, click on get a demo, and simply fill out the form to speak with an Entop expert. If you're an existing user and want to dig deeper, feel free to check out support.entopology.com to access our help center.